Welcome to Words Unspoken, the Hills podcast, paying tribute to the reality show that aired on MTV from 2006 to 2010. We are two Southern sisters re-watching The Hills in 2016 and chatting about it weekly for your entertainment. My name is Susan, and I'm a 30-something photographer who hates most reality shows but loves The Hills. I have been re-watching the show for a few months. My name is Jem. I'm a professional in my 30s who hasn't seen the show since it originally aired, so I'm really looking forward to reliving the magic again 10 years later. We watched the first few seasons of the show in real time when we were younger versions of ourselves, and we are so excited to revisit every episode from our new points of view. Today we are going to be discussing Episode 3, Season 1, An Unexpected Call. This episode opens once again with the girls at the Hillside Villas, and um, Lauren is getting ready to go to school, and Heidi is so excited talking about her new job. And here we have yet another incident of awkward moments, wherein two ladies compliment each other's cute outfits as a way to work through that tough moment with each other. As we discussed the last episode, absolutely. I just have to say I love the wording that Heidi is using here. Like, she's going to be working with celebrities in the club. And she also mentions it's her first real job. Jim, would you have guessed that this was Heidi's first real job? Quite obviously, yes, Susan. Does Heidi know she can't play solitaire all day at her new job? Oh, Susan, you may remember that Heidi says she's planning on, quote-unquote, running around all the time, being really busy, (laughs) which sounds super fun. (laughs) As someone who has been running around all the time, being really, really busy for many, many years, uh, Heidi definitely glamorizes that aspect of, uh, of working in the entertainment world. So now we move to Teen Vogue, where Lauren is working, Her phone rings, and it's Blaine with the exciting news. She's going to New York City for Fashion Week to deliver a dress to Lisa. And can we please note that Blaine, he definitely enjoys dramatic announcements. That is becoming kind of his thing throughout the season already. Blaine loves to bring the drama. He loves to break news. He loves to drag things out. Remember when he called Lauren to tell her she was getting a job, but it took him like a thousand years to get to that point. So Blaine is a little bit of a a dramatic guy himself in addition to all of our uh, divas who are the stars of the show. I think that in the next episode, if Blaine is in it, up on the screen will pop Blaine instead of his Teen Vogue title. It's going to say most dramatic person ever. (laughs) <laughs> in a rose ceremony no just kidding <laughs> that's another reality show that we will never do a podcast about ever rest assured america so what do you think about this um lauren's just going to deliver a dress to lisa but i mean she's going to new york so that's cool and blaine says he doesn't know how long she's gonna stay i think blaine definitely builds up her hopes and her expectations with his ambiguity when he's describing what it's going to be like. Lauren being Lauren, her mind just skyrockets to the ultimate best case scenario where she's, you know, sitting in the front row at the fashion show with Lisa, enjoying everything and everybody falling all over her and thanking her so much for bringing the dress on time. And so her expectations are definitely building in this moment and it sets her up for for a pretty sad moment later in the episode. So then we move into Audrina's office. And Brian shows up, and I know you're probably thinking, why in the world is everyone bothering Audrina at work again? Well, thanks to the Us Weekly 10th Anniversary The Hills edition, I can answer this. I'm so excited. Tell me more. Well, I think this is the reason. Audrina says in there that she had this full-time job, and she would have to take time off to do tapings. And she would lose out on money, so she was having problems paying her rent. She had to borrow money from her parents. And she finally told the Hills producers, like, if you either have to pay me or I'm going to have to quit the show. So I think that was probably part of, oh, well, we can film you at work. And I'm sure it was free advertising for the studio she worked for, so they were fine with it. But... I feel really bad for her. That got in the way of, like, her making money. The moment that Brian walked into the studio, he does this super awkward pew, 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 pew 
a greeting thing, you know, with his with his hands, kind of like he's shooting little guns. Um, coincidentally, Susan, this is the gesture that I use in my current life when imitating any man who I don't feel is a very genuine person. It's kind of my go-to. And people joke uh, to me that I do that every time I'm imitating someone who I may not 100% respect. So I had a little chuckle with myself that that is how Brian made his entrance because he was so nervous and awkward, not very genuine when greeting Audrina and did his little like, pew, 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 I'm here now. I do not like Brian. He is annoying. He gives her, Audrina these fake compliments that are yes. not genuine at all. And I just want to tell him to turn around and leave Audrina alone. She is way too good for him. I love her and she's gorgeous. And he's yuck. We may have hit a wall with my counts of Lauren saying, Heidi to Heidi when she's upset, but I do have a little tally going in season one, episode three of what I like to call Audrina's compliment pouty face. So when Brian says, do the models get mad when the receptionist is hotter than they are? Audrina makes a little pouty face and goes, "Mm," and that is how Audrina takes the compliment. (laughs) I mean, she was probably thinking that is the fakest compliment ever because it was. And it was so annoying when she was being so nice to show him around and he was like talking about all the girls and everything. And she was joking about it, but I was like, really, dude, come on. Ew. And I think this is also when they discuss the times when they're going to meet up for dinner. There's an interesting conversation surrounding this, Susan. I'm sorry, do you mean when Brian says he does not get out of bed until 6 (laughs) p.m.? Audrina says, I work till six. And then that's when he makes the remark about when he gets up in kind of a bragging way. And this is the moment where Audrina should have reached her toe out, tripped him, shown him out of the studios and never spoken to him again. Do you remember the song, No Scrubs? (laughs) (laughs) It was written about Brian. Absolutely. So then we go back to the apartment and Lauren is freaking out and packing. She only has one hour. She's telling Heidi, I'm flying to New York and I might stay up to five days. She's so excited. You can tell Heidi is so jealous. And we get to see the pink suitcase again. Yay! Yes! I knew you would be so excited. I made a note in all capitals that said pink suitcase reappears because I knew you would be so happy about it. I was so happy. I love the pink suitcase. It is large and in charge. So then Lauren heads out the door to get to the airport and did you you notice her hat yeah it was fun it was so fun but also completely something that both of us would have worn back then oh 100 percent. although i venture to say you would also wear it today i probably would i probably would and did you notice in that scene also when lauren brought in the designer dress heidi's like oh you bought me a present Ugh. yeah i'm sure that lauren brought you a very expensive dress sure No, Heidi, this Mark by Mark Jacobs dress is not for you for free. We go to Heidi and Audrina in the hot tub chatting about boys and school, even though neither one of them are in school. (laughs) And this is where I think it's Heidi says something about every guy not from L.A. is from like North Carolina. Because Jordan is from North Carolina. Right. Heidi's world is very large and expanded, and she has great experiences in life, and she's clearly alluding to these wide variety of experiences in life by saying every guy not from L.A. is from where her boyfriend is from. I wish Audrina had said right then, I'm not really interested in Brian, but she doesn't, so that was pretty sad. And Heidi, if you notice, she keeps justifying why she dropped out of school. I think she's trying to talk herself into it, that she did the right thing. But I did think it was funny, and I quote when she said, I just want to get in some clubs. And she thinks because she has this fabulous new job at Bolt House that she's going to be out partying all night. Because that's honestly, you can tell that's just what she wants to do. She wants to be out having fun, which for the record, I think is fine if that's what you want to. But you know what? You can do that with going to school. You know you can go to school and also go on a party. In fact, I would say that's when most people do the majority of their partying when they're in college. You know, you can go to class. You can keep up with your grades for the most part and still party. I mean, hello, that's much better than having a job. Yeah, agreed. And there's also kind of a, I don't know if sad is the right word. Pathetic is too strong of a word, but kind of a sad conversation that Audrina and Heidi have with each other about how guys pretend to be nice guys and they tell you, oh, I'm a good guy. I'm a nice guy. And at the end of the day, they all want the same thing. And Heidi just accepts this as a fact and Audrina agrees. And then they both sit there looking 
looking extremely downhearted in their hot tub. To be fair, we're from the South and they're living in LA. And I would have to venture from what I've heard from my friends who live in LA, which I have quite a few and I know you do too, is that that really is how a lot of guys are out there. Oh, sure. I'm not saying that guys in the South are better. They just, maybe they put on a better front, but you know, the Southern politeness and all that. But LA seems like shark infested waters. No, agreed. And then all the while the men are trying to prove to the women or whoever's trying to hook up with whoever is trying to prove how different and how non LA they are when they're really just all LA. Then we move to the awesome scene where Lauren is changing in the bathroom of the airport. And I love this scene for some reason. I don't know why. It's just, I don't know. It's so, I think it's one of those scenes that comes off as very natural where Lauren's suitcase is literally laying on the floor of the airport bathroom. There's stuff spilling out of it. She runs in the stall to change. It's one of those moments. It feels really genuine. You feel like it, you know, it, it happened to you at some point in time and it isn't this big, you know, overly staged moment. And, uh, just seems like, you know, Lauren is really, really nervous and really excited and has to have the perfect outfit on before she gets to the fashion show. So I agree with you. I, I thought this was kind of a, a cool and different scene also. Yeah, I really did enjoy it because, like you said, who hasn't changed in a bathroom? Normally it's like after work. If you're going somewhere, you change in a bathroom. And so I just, I just really enjoyed that. So then we move to one of my favorite parts of the episode, Heidi's first day at Bolt House. And I have to say, so far on the hills, I really appreciate how much time they're giving to the girls' careers, and they're talking about work, and it's not just about guys and the drama. There's some of that, but it is not the primary focus. And if you remember anything about Laguna Beach, they never talked about school, ever. Like, they talked about Lauren's grades one time, but there it was all about the boys and the drama, which is fine. It's high school. And now I appreciate that post-high school, they're actually talking about class, and they're talking about their work. I really appreciate that. Susan, as a couple of Southern ladies, we would be remiss in not pointing out something crucial that happens at the beginning of the scene when Heidi walks in for her first day on the job to meet with Brent. His assistant is none other than Landon, currently a Southern charm, which is a ridiculous Bravo reality show about Charleston. I have never seen it in my life. I don't know what I'm talking about right now. I do not have a subscription to it, season pass-wise on Apple TV. Well, Jim, as you know, The Hills is the only reality show that I like, so I really don't know what you're talking about. Well, I'll tell you this. A couple of years ago, I was on the West Coast, and I was out to dinner with a bunch of people who live out there, and they were like, oh, you're from the South. You must know. And they start naming the names of the people on Southern Charm. And I gave them the blankest look, didn't know what they're talking about, laughed at them. And I said, no, it's not like that in the South. We don't know, you know, all of the characters on those shows. Eventually I accidentally began to watch it and it accidentally has become the only reality show that I currently watch. And it is amazing. Um, but Landon is uh, an interesting character on the show. And it was just so strange to see her 10 years ago as the receptionist at this place. And it kind of makes you want, want wonder what happened in between because we got few details from Southern Charm. So for those of you out there who are hardcore reality show buffs, definitely be on the lookout for Landon because there are a couple of appearances from her 10 years ago in the show. What a small world. So anyway, back to Heidi's first day at Bolt House. Brent is bored as usual. He is too cool to be at Bolt House because it bears his name. He's exhausted from being Brent. It is exhausting to be him, and he is tired, and his hair is large. He is like, it is too hard to be the boss here. <laughs> this is just the most difficult thing ever. And, oh, what? There's cameras here? I didn't notice. <laughs> and then at this point, I think this is when um, Heidi gets grouped into the room with some other minions, and they're, I guess, addressing envelopes or doing some kind of invitation-related stuff. And she ends up right next to to an FIDM student and they have the discussion about Heidi dropping out and that student looks at her so judgingly. Yeah, super coincidental that she just happens to end up next to her. But before that, Brent tells her that this job is Monday through Friday and the look on Heidi's face is priceless. She's like, huh? 
What? I talked. But she doesn't say anything. But what I was thinking was, okay, it's Monday through Friday. Who cares? You dropped out of school. You don't have anything else to do. What is the problem? And then I was like, oh, wait, we're talking about Heidi. So, obviously. Right. So, it all makes sense. Yeah. So, then we go to the Marc Jacobs show. Lauren is wearing the cutest pants and top. I love it. However, I'm like, why are you wearing that to a fashion week show in which you think you're going to get to stay? I just thought it was not very fashion-y. Susan, that was my exact thought about that exact outfit. What was she doing? Maybe that's one of those things we can't quite remember, but the whole fabric necklace with big beads and kind of the knee-length capri denim situation. Maybe that was okay at a Marc Jacobs show, but I don't feel like that was ever okay. So I did not enjoy that outfit. Um, I had the same thoughts you did. Yeah, it was super odd. So Lisa grabs the dress, says thanks, and then says, okay, Lauren, come out and sit with me. You're going to be on the front row. We're going to see all these gorgeous fashions. No, 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 Susan, that's, that's but, not what happened. But, no. what? Let's no, go. that's what happens. That is what happens. All of Lauren, dreams come true. Lauren is sent away to her black car, never to be seen again, and the disappointment on her face when she leaves Bryant Park, you can feel it in your very heart of hearts. It is so sad. I mean, Lisa literally takes the dress, says thanks, which is super nice of her, and says, now go back to L.A. The contrast of Anna Wintour front row at the show and the models walking the runway as Elsie gets in the car and rides away is just heartbreaking. If you were to look at my notes right now, it says the look on Lauren's face is heartbreaking. So we are on the same page about that. Our vocabulary is extensive. So extensive. And we never use the same words at the same time in text messages messages ever. I don't know what you're talking about. I never even text you. Let's go back to Bolt House. Heidi goes into the bathroom (laughs) to call Lauren to complain because she's just found out that her job is Monday through Friday, nine to six. She's so bored. It's a nightmare of a job. All she's doing is addressing envelopes. She hates it so much. She's so disappointed. Whoever staged this scene from an MTV standpoint was genius because the whole conversation is Heidi sitting on the toilet in a stall with the door shut. All you see are her high heels wiggling around under the bathroom door and there's a sad pathetic plunger on the ground next to her i didn't even (laughs) see that that's hilarious and then it's interspersed with shots of sad lauren in the limo so and then heidi says we are both having bad days (laughs) (laughs) no heidi you're having a normal work day this is normal for so many people look heidi when you get a new job you don't automatically become CEO. You have to start at the bottom. And starting at the bottom usually means addressing envelopes, licking stamps, getting coffee, getting sandwiches, booking travel, etc., etc. That's completely normal. You need to check your privilege. People didn't know about starting from the bottom because Drake wasn't around then and they certainly didn't know about checking their privilege. So we have to give these girls a few years, maybe 10, to learn how these things work. I will still tell Heidi to check her privilege today. And probably in the next episode too. (laughs) (laughs) So then Heidi goes and asks Landon if she can speak to Brent. And she has a discussion with Brent and Jen about her job. I think I would more use the phrase, Heidi attacks Brent and Jen about her job. And this is the moment where I need to discuss the most retro part of the episode. I simply could not take my eyes off this. The drapes in Brent's office are atrocious. They are too big. They are too long. They look like they're filled with years worth of dust. Maybe Brent is having some kind of allergic reaction to all of the like things that are living in his oversized (laughs) drapes in his stupid office. And that's why he looks bored and confused all the time because those drapes are the ugliest thing ever and I know they were fashionable at the time in an office with exposed brick but this Jen girl the nightlife producer and Heidi and Brent when they're talking I just paid no attention to any of it because the drapes were just smothering me basically I mean, they were pretty terrible, but just the whole conversation that they have is just, Heidi was like, I was embarrassed for her. I was cringing the whole time. I'm like, you cannot say this to your new boss. Like nothing she said was okay. You don't complain and say, this isn't what I thought the job would be. And basically he was like, you've got to do the work and put in the time before you can get anything better. And I think he was just like really so disgusted with her. So after she left, the look that Brent and Jen exchanged was priceless. 
ridiculous. They just looked at each other like, wow, did this really I would, happen? Absolute disdain for Heidi. Absolute disdain. Such disdain. She is actually lucky that she didn't get fired. But once again, I know we don't like to talk about reality shows being fake. But obviously, I feel like Lauren and Heidi's jobs are both secure because they're on the hills. Because I feel like if they weren't, there's a good chance they would have been fired. Agreed. So next... We go to the Japanese restaurant for Audrina and Brian's first date. And the waiter comes across as just the most lovely gentleman when he tells (laughs) Brian that the drink he orders is only women would order. Susan, can we talk about what would have happened if that had been me on a date at that dinner and my husband, who is a teetotaler and wouldn't have ordered the green apple soju, but if the waiter had said anything like that at my table, how sorry he would have been to have said those words to me, Jem, of Words Unspoken Podcast. Now, Jem, you know I really dislike Brian, but I will give him props here for being like, um, no, I'm ordering it anyway. I'm confident in my manhood. Instead of letting that waiter shame him into not getting the drink he wanted. By the way, that was, I mean, that's rude. That is the rudest thing ever. That's the drink he wanted. The only reason why that guy said that is because he was on TV, I'm sure. But I was just like, I was glad when he said, no, that's what I'm getting. He did stick to it. You have to, you have to give him that. So Brian, his um, good qualities are that he is tall enough to be in a specific acting role that required a super tall person and that he is confident enough in his manhood to order quote unquote girly drinks. And then he ruins it by saying, oh, you're always working. Uh, yeah. Cause most normal people can't get up at 6 PM. Brian, most people have to get up early. Brian, most people have to work for their LA apartments, Brian. And then Brian brings out the big guns, not his greeting guns that he had when he came into Andrina's office, but the big compliment guns, he said something that would melt any girl's heart, that would close a deal on any date. He said, I really like your hair. And then this is tally number two of Audrina compliment pouty face. Mm. Oh, Brian, you couldn't think of a better compliment. What do you like about my hair, Brian? What is it about it that you like? I need you to expand more on this information. Oh, It's what Audrina was probably thinking. Brian, bless your heart, Brian. Just bless it all the way back to North Carolina, where everybody's from. We also find out in this scene that Audrina has acting aspirations, which, well, I guess, spoiler alert, I didn't remember. I didn't either, and that she used to be blonde. That I knew, and actually, I think she's blonde today, to be honest. I think she is. I believe she is currently blonde and pregnant, but who knows? I have not been looking on social media at any accounts of any former Hills stars, so I have no idea what I'm talking about. But if you would like to see our Instagram account, you can find it at Words on Spoken Podcast. So let's talk about Audrina for just one minute. I can think of better compliments for her than Brian. Let's talk about how gorgeous she is. Did we already So do pretty. That? Yeah, so pretty. She has such beautiful eyes and a beautiful smile. And she's usually dressed down. Like, I, we really haven't seen her yet where she dresses up to go out or whatever. And she is just beautiful no matter what she's wearing. I think she's just so gorgeous. Agreed. So then we go to Brian dropping Audrina off. He says goodnight, and they go their separate ways. Susan, I'm sorry to burst your bubble, but they did not go their separate ways. <laughs> that is no. not what happened. She invites him in for coffee. And of course, they you, just had coffee. You can't see me, but I am using quotation marks. They had coffee, and he went straight home. Absolutely. I mean, come on, Audrina. It's Brian. He does not deserve coffee. Slam the door in his face. So then we go back to Lauren and Heidi's apartment. And once again, we have the horror of seeing Heidi in bed. Uh, and just eating cereal and, and watching TV in the bed. And oh, uh, just the depths of despair. And Jordan is like, oh, you're waking me up. And she's like, I got to go to work. And he has a great solution to this. <laughs> and again. it's just stay in bed all day and quit. Thus far, we're only, what, three episodes in? Yes. In the past, either one episode or two episodes, Jordan has told Heidi to quit school and not to quit her job. Jordan, what is your plan for Heidi? What is your plan? Let me tell you about Jordan. He's a winner. (laughs) He is going places. The only thing worse than Jordan is Brian. Susan, are they both going to end up on the DVD jackets of the Hills DVD collection? Is that going to be their big win? Yeah, this might be them peaking, but we'll see. (laughs) 
So then we um, segue back to Bolt House. Heidi is having an even worse day. Things are getting worse for Heidi by the very minute at this point in the episode. She has to get Brent a sandwich. Mm-hmm. She has to arrange travel for Brent and two other people. Oh, wait, is that it? Because it seems no. like it should be more as no. much as she was complaining. She has to enter start work and finish work in her Outlook calendar every day until the end of all time <gasps> in perpetuity. And very sad music <laughs> plays in the background while she is entering these things in her calendar. <laughs> so when they first started on that shot, they were a little far away. And I'm like, oh, she must be booking the travel. And then they zoom in. I'm like, nope. She is sad. Sadly entering her prison <laughs> sentence, you would think, by the music and the look on her face. 20 years to life for Heidi in her Outlook calendar. Um, and I think this is where the, uh, the episode starts to fade away and you think that everything's just going to end normally. And then Lauren comes home. She's walking through the hallway of her apartment. And I was like, that is the ugliest hallway I've ever seen for being in a nice LA apartment. It was so <laughs> ugly. Anyway, she comes in the door as one does when they're coming back from the airport. And let's talk about answering machines. What is that? There's So there's a box on the counter and it has all these blinking lights on it and she pushes buttons on it. And I think this is supposed to be an important moment. But Susan, I don't know what's happening. I'm a young person and I don't remember those days. So can you explain to me what that was? Well, in the olden days, we had this thing called telephones that were actually like mounted to the wall with cords. And we didn't really like that because you had to stand in place and talk on the phone and it was super annoying. So then all of a sudden we got these phones called cordless phones and we got these things called answering machines and people could leave messages for when you weren't home because guess what? You couldn't talk on the phone when you weren't at home. That is insanity. You have blown my mind with this information. So Lauren gets the voicemail for the ages. It is Jason Waller. Dun, dun, dun. Jason Waller. J Wall, I believe. AKA J Wall. Now yeah. as the as the Laguna Beach watcher, can you give us a real quick background on this gentleman just to catch everyone up? J Wall is a baseball player from Laguna Beach who dated Jessica from Laguna Beach and then dated LC as she was known in Laguna Beach. And they have broken up after a very dramatic relationship. And we have not seen or heard about him in the hills. So if you're just watching the hills and you never watch Laguna Beach, go watch Laguna Beach. It is totally worth it. I've actually been re-watching it the last few days. And no, I did not finish season one in two days. That's ridiculous. You would never do that. So you're saying for somebody like me who hasn't watched Laguna Beach lately, my brain and my heart and my soul cannot possibly comprehend what this answering machine message meant for the end of this episode. Basically, it means that Lauren's ex-boyfriend, who she had a very messy relationship with and a messy breakup with, has for some reason left her a message and said he has moved to LA. Shocking. This is simply shocking. Completely shocking. Especially for someone who has the DVDs and there's a picture of him on there. But that's beside the point. (laughs) So we end, so we actually end on an even more dramatic moment that segues between Lauren looking out the window at her fashion school and when Heidi is actually entering her work hours in the computer and interspersed with that is a picture of the answering machine with the light blinking, which is completely out of order because Lauren has already listened to the message, so it shouldn't be blinking and saying one. Susan, did you notice that the girls in the fashion show class all looked like beautiful dolls? Yes, I did. Jim and Susan, funniest moments. So, Jim, what do you think is the funniest moment of the show? This was the easiest choice out of any of the episodes that I've watched so far. When Brent sent Heidi out to get his food, he said, Heidi, can you get me a somewhat? <laughs> and I, I wrote it down. S-A-M-W-A-T-C-C-C-C-C-H-H-H because that's exactly what he said. (laughs) That was amazing. My funniest moment was also had to do with Heidi and Brent and I know we already talked about it but when Brent and Jen looked at each other and just gave each other that look I died laughing. I loved that moment so that's my funniest. Winners of the week. Susan, who was the winner of this episode? 
think Audrina was the winner of this episode. She had a date with a cute boy, even though we don't like him. I'm sure he is considered in some circles a cute boy. <laughs> in some she, circles. She is responsible and works nine to six and really wasn't complaining about it. Everyone else was complaining about it. And I just thought she was the winner of the episode. Because unfortunately, if you look at everyone else, Heidi definitely is not. And Lauren had a sad little episode. So she really, in an episode in which there wasn't really anyone who totally won it, I would say Audrina won it the most. What about you, Jim? The clear winner for me in this episode did not occur to me until the very last moment, but Jason, formerly known as J-Wall, was the winner because Lauren did not rage delete that voicemail the minute she heard it. Does this episode of The Hills pass the Bechdel Bechdel test? test? The Bechdel test asks three questions, normally of a film, but in this case, a show. First question, Susan. Does this show have at least two female characters with a name? Why, I believe so. Second question. Do these characters speak to one another? Heck yes. Third question. Do they talk about something other than a man? Yes, for the time being. And if I'm not mistaken, this conversation that is not related to men is much more limited than it was in episodes one and two. So let's keep that in mind. I agree. I did say it could be a matter of time. I'm afraid of the trends that we're seeing, Susan. Me too, Jim. Thanks for listening to Words Unspoken, the Hills podcast. Here's the scoop on all of the many ways you can contact us. We'd love to hear your feedback and ideas for the show. You can email us at wordsunspokenpodcast at gmail.com. You can find us on Twitter at The Hills Podcast and Instagram and Facebook at Words Unspoken Podcast. We are even on Tumblr, which definitely did not exist when The Hills first aired. And you can also also visit our website, wordsunspokenpodcast.com. Please subscribe, rate, and review us on iTunes. We are also available on Stitcher, Google Play, and SoundCloud. We'll talk to you next Friday. Bye, y'all. Bye, y'all. You and all your pretty little friends Up in the hills where the party never ends Your schemes and your dreams when you're whole and you're broken I'm telling all about it in my words unspoken Oh, good Lord.